Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, our topic is cam follower installation. And helping us to talk about that topic, first time guest to the Motion Industries studio, Kevin Muse. Kevin, nice to meet you. Hello, Tom, thanks. Kevin is with McGill, and he has many years of application and product knowledge with the McGill cam follower product line, which has been around since 1937, and that's lots of different series types and options, so welcome. With a cam follower, just as with any bearing product, there are certain installation points to keep in mind so that you can get the best performance. Okay, well, where do you want to begin today? Because there's a lot of stuff on the table. Well, before we begin any type of work, we first make sure we're following the company's standard lockout, tagout procedures and wear the proper PPE. Nice going. I normally do that, but Kevin, you beat me to the punch this time. You have to make sure that you wear your proper PPE. He's got his safety glasses on. I've got mine. Good to go. Kevin, it's all on you. Before we mount this cam follower, we should first consider if and how we will relubricate it in its application. Now, I see right here that it does have several holes to take grease, and there are these two tiny metal plugs right there. What's going on? Depending on the particular size, it can have an axial hole at both ends of the stud, mm -hmm. as well as a radial hole in the non-threaded portion of the stud. The axial lube holes at the ends of the stud accept a drive type grease fitting for cam follower sizes up to five inch. Five inch and larger sizes will have threaded holes. The radial hole in the stud allows grease to be added via a lubrication hole through the stud's housing. If that feature is not being used, then the hole is covered off by the housing. Well, since the axial hole extends end to end in this one, it looks like we could put a grease fitting at either end. Now, when we do that, what keeps the grease from coming out of the other end? One of those little plugs you pointed out would be installed at the opposite end so that the grease will be directed into the bearing. Those metal plugs are important and should not be overlooked or discarded. They're included with all stud type cam followers. Now I see there's two plugs included. Is that in case I lose one because I'm a fumble fingers and I drop it down the drain? <laughs> well, it, it does give you a backup for cases when you're using a grease fitting at one end. In cases where you won't be relubricating it, installing the plugs at each end helps protect it from contaminant entry. Now keeping it protected from contamination certainly promotes longer operating life and as you know, longer life means less downtime, fewer bearing replacements, and we're saving money on the bottom line there. The drive type fittings can be installed with tooling made to allow driving the fitting without damage to it. The fitting can be driven using an arbor press or hammer. Okay. We have a grease fitting, tool made for some hammer blows. The plug can likewise be installed with a small drive pin or arbor. When installing the plug at the end having the screwdriver slot, we want the plugs flush to the bottom of the slot so that right. a screwdriver blade can be used later to hold the stud. Have our plug. Okay. We'll use this punch. Same thing with the hammer again? Yep. Okay. A few hammer blows. Now, Kevin, once we have the fittings and the plugs installed, we should be ready to install it. Is that correct? That's right. First, we want to make sure our housing is free of any sharp edges or burrs to it. The stud should have a press fit into the housing. Recommended housing diameters can be found in our catalog or in our instruction sheet, which is available online. A press fit helps provide solid support of the stud. When press fitting the stud, we want to apply pressure only towards the stud end face of the bearing, preferably using an arbor press. Okay, well, it sounds to me like a press fit is an extremely important factor, Kev. Yes, it is. All right, so we're doing the press fit down there. Now, what happens with a loose fit? A loose fit can allow the stud to misalign within the housing hole, which could induce corner loading to the follower which can reduce operating life. A loose housing fit can also allow the stud to move within the housing during operation, and that creates wear and damage to the stud, and that likewise can reduce bearing operating life. You know, in some situations, Kevin, using an arbor press for installation may not be practical or possible, so 
can you just use a hammer in that case? Using a hammer can work for installation, but it's critical that you do not hammer directly on the bearing. Okay, so we have the stud fitted into the housing. Next, we're going to need to apply a nut to lock the bearing into place like we did here with these other two, right? Yes. Stud types require a certain amount of torque applied to the locking nuts in order to adequately lock the stud in place. Why is it so important that we have just the right amount of torque? Excessive torque can cause bearing damage and inadequate torque can allow the cam follower to become disassembled from the housing. Keeping the proper torque as shown in the bearings chart will lock the stud in place and keep the bearing in its intended position. For this one, a one and a half inch diameter roller and five eighths thread size, the recommended torque is 325 inch pounds. We set our torque wrench to the specified value and use a screwdriver in the screwdriver slot to hold the stud still so that it doesn't want to rotate as we tighten the nut. Okay, and, and what we're doing, we're, we're waiting for the click, right? Once we hear that click, we know we've got the right torque value. That's correct. All right. So with our wrench set at the proper torque, turn, and we heard that yeah, click. that was the click right there. Right I heard there. That. Kevin, nice job, extremely informative. Great first time on set here. That was Kevin Muse. He is with McGill, and he did a great job. But let's just say you got some questions about what you saw here today. Then you can contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location, talk to the representative, and I promise you, they're going to help you. Hopefully this helped you with your practical application. And uh, early on, you saw Kevin. He reminded me about PPE, which is so important. Always wear the proper personal protective equipment, whatever the job calls for. Safety is priority number one. Number two is watching more Am I How To videos with me, Tom Clark, as your host. Or you can even check out the Tom's Toolbox. Got a lot of good stuff in there, too. Thanks for watching today.